This is Dr. Andrew Yun at St. John's Hospital, and we are going to spend the next few moments speaking specifically and technically about total hip replacement. We're going to speak about OrthoHip, which is our program at St. John's of patient-specific surgery, patient-specific hospitalization, and patient-specific recovery. In these next few slides, we'll look at the technical aspects of hip replacement and how we use a combination of surgery, our computer hardware and our computer software to take measurements and then use those in calculations to balance a hip to recreate the perfect symmetry we are seeking in each case. So our results on this technique have been published in the Journal of Hip Surgery and we'll take you through a couple of examples. So we'll take you through two specific examples and we'll start with this one we can see a severe hip arthritis on the left side and we compare that to the normal healthy right side on the left side there's a severe arthritis with a complete loss of joint space which represents a complete loss of articular cartilage between the femur and acetabulum we also see sclerocystic changes in the acetabulum and sclerocystic changes in the femoral head. And most importantly, in this case, we see a collapse of the femoral head, a loss of volume in bone, which is leading to a shortening of the femoral head. And I'll show you what this patient looked like four years ago when symptoms started in the next slide. This is that same patient four years prior to presentation for surgery and hip replacement. And we can see a progression over time. Now, this is the right hip, and it's a healthy right hip four years ago, and it's a healthy right hip today. But we can begin to see on the left side several things. The first thing, thing that we see is that there is a narrowing of joint space. This is subtle, but if you look at the amount of space between the femoral head and the acetabulum, we can see it's substantially reduced compared to the joint space in the right hip. We also see the initiation of sclerocystic changes which tell, which tell us the underlying cartilage is no longer protecting the bone as efficiently. So this patient has arthritic changes, but usually at this stage, the changes are mild to moderate. The hip still functions, even though it doesn't function as well as it used to, and we'll follow that hip until it reaches a point where it significantly interferes with that person's well-being and quality of life. Now that this patient is ready for surgery, we begin the surgical planning process. The initial x-rays are very helpful for diagnosis. These next x-rays are critical for pre-surgical planning, and they're critical because we need very pure baseline measurements in order to accurately assess the degree of starting deformity and then calculate what steps are necessary to reproduce a perfect symmetry. So in this situation, we'll first start with pelvic symmetry. And what we're looking for is balance between the right and the left hemipelvis. And this x-ray is a very good start, but we can see that there is still some imbalance in the femoral leg position. This leg is in neutral. This leg is slightly abducted or off to the side. And even that slight degree of difference can create abnormalities in measurement. So this is a good x-ray, but we're actually going to reposition the patient again until we have an exactly symmetric x-ray. So in this x-ray, we can see we have now moved the right leg inward. That's called adduction so that it is now symmetric in alignment with the leg that we will correct. And we are looking at several aspects to this pelvic x-ray. The first is that we start with the calibration. Our x-rays are calibrated to a 25 millimeter marker, so we know exactly within the millimeter what our appropriate ratio is for correction. Then we will look at the pelvis. We have the pubic symphysis in the middle. And we want to make sure that lines up with the spine. We look at the obturator foramina and make sure there's symmetry between the two sides. We will then look across the roof of the acetabulum 
to make sure we're symmetric. And then we will also draw lines across the teardrop, which is the anatomic base of the acetabulum. We'll look at the position of the femur, specifically looking at alignment, as well as rotation, as indicated by the position of the lesser trochanter. Once we are satisfied that we have a neutral pelvis, we will begin our computer measurements. These images will then be downloaded into our computer guidance system. Using the computer guidance system, we will look at several parameters. We will look at stem sizing, acetabulum sizing, positioning, leg length discrepancy. But for the specifics of this talk, we are going to specifically look at correction of leg length discrepancy. So once we have the, the pelvis in a neutral position, we will draw a horizontal line across the base of the pelvis using these two landmarks. This is the teardrop. This is the teardrop. This is a very consistent landmark and it helps us level the pelvis. We will then draw a, a line to the landmark of the base of the top of the lesser trochanter. And from this, we can calculate the distance. On the healthy right side, that distance is 23.8 millimeters. On the left side, it is 15.5 millimeters. The distance has shortened because of the collapse of the femoral head. We therefore can calculate an 8.3 millimeter leg length discrepancy, which we will then plan to correct with our subsequent surgical moves. Once we know that we have to correct 8.3 millimeters of discrepancy, we will then begin sizing off the opposite hip. The opposite or the healthy hip becomes our template to which we will balance the diseased hip. On this, healthy hip, we will determine size and alignment of the femoral stem. And very importantly, we will determine our landmark numbers. We'll look at three specific numbers. We'll look at the level of the neck cut or the femoral calcar. We'll look at the distance between the superior calcar and the shoulder of the implant. And then finally, the distance, which we call the leti, which is the distance between the lesser trochanter to the equator of the femoral head. Once we have these numbers, then we know exactly where we will want to put that implant in surgery to be able to reproduce a reconstruction equivalent to the healthy side. With these implants in place, and here now we've taken images in surgery, we see the healthy right hip, and then we see our implants in the healthy left, in the reconstructed left hip. And from here, we can take calibrated measurements and we know that this is 11.6 millimeters. So it's within 0.1 millimeters of our planned resection depth. Now, this is the exciting part. Once we know that we are in the appropriate range for correction of the deformity, we will then download those images again into our computer guidance system. And we will begin to take the same measurements that we took prior to surgery. So again, we'll draw a horizontal line across the teardrops, and then we will connect that to the superior pole of the lesser trochanter on each side. Remember, we started on the healthy right side with a length of 23.8 millimeters. We had eight millimeters of shortening. But by following our landmarks, we were able to restore the eight millimeter deficiency, and now we have 23.8 millimeters of length on both sides. So there is an exact symmetry of balance between the right hip and the now corrected left hip. So we can take a step back for a moment and then see how our reconstruction imitates his natural anatomy. So this is his left hip four years prior to the onset of disease. And we can see he's got a femoral head, a nice long neck connected to his shaft at 135 degrees. And then we look at his disease hip with collapse and shortening. And then we look at the reconstructed hip and then we can see that we were able to accurately reconstruct his anatomic parameters to his pre-diseased condition. So wrapping up now, what we really wanted to highlight in those two examples was the tools that we use the measurements we're able to make, 
and the degree of correction we are able to achieve. Based on this method of hardware, software, measurement, and confirmation. It's a very powerful system and we've been so pleased with the results and we're more than happy to share our technique and our findings with you. Thank you.